Hi students. In this video we're going to discuss the use of configurations. Imagine you're out in the real world and you have a part that has multiple shapes. Maybe it's a timing belt, maybe it's an air cylinder, or even our old friend the V8. As you can see in the V8, the pistons are in all different positions. So if I were going to continue to add parts to this model, one of the next things I would add is a valve train. Some of the valves will be open, some of the valves will be closed. And the, the springs that drive those valves will be in all different positions, all the way down the cylinder bank. So how do you account for that? Well, we used to have a lot of trouble with that, but now we have something called configurations. So I can draw a configuration for every different state of compression for each of these cylinder instances. I could also have a free length configuration. So I could draw the spring uncompressed as it would sit on my workbench before installation. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's go over to another part. We're going to look at this hydraulic cylinder. This cylinder we're going to draw in several different extension lengths. And we're going to be able to pick those extension lengths in the assembly. So let's see how this is done. I'm in the Configuration Manager. And I'm going to right click and say Add Configuration. I'm going to add a configuration name. And let's say it's going to be 12 inch extension. I'll say OK. We see the new configuration that I just created and named is now the active configuration. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the feature cylinder extension length to 12 inches. rebuild my part. Now I'm going to create configurations for 18 and 24 inches. So I'll come back, right click, add configuration. I'll say 18 inch extension. 18 is now my active configuration. And edit feature. I'll change this to 18 inches. Now, when I change the extension length, I have to be sure that this configuration is specified so that I don't go in and I change the length across all the different configurations I'm creating. So, watch this radio button. Okay, and I'm going to create one more. Create 24 inch extension. And there we go. So I'm going to save this part. And now I'm going to open up an assembly, and we're going to see how this can be used. Uh, I drew this quick little assembly. And these hydraulic cylinders extend and retract to move the bucket and allow this backhoe to dig. So if I want to change the extension lengths, we see that our configurations are now at the assembly level. If I hit the drop down, there's the default and all the extension lengths I created. So if I want to pull the cylinder in, I'll choose my 12 inch extension. Oops, I guess it was on 12 inches. Let's try something different. 
try 18 inches. And you can see the backhoe moves. Twenty four inches, it moves all the way back. So I'll put it back at twelve. And these are all the same part numbers this one, this one, and this one. So I know that just went off the screen, but I'm going to change it to eighteen inch extension and say OK the bucket curls. I'll change this one to 24 inch extension and say OK. And the bucket curls inward. So I have one part number here, here, and here. But I can show that one part number in multiple states just like compressing the spring in the V8 Valtrin. This will become very useful in things like air cylinders, hydraulic cylinders, uh, springs, timing belts, stuff that will all have one part number but could have many different shapes throughout the machine. Now, I want to caution you on one thing. This is also a very misused feature. The one thing I don't want you to do ever, ever, ever is use this so that maybe you're drawing the frame of a machine. So you're using some structural steel. It has a common cross section. And you have all different lengths. So you decide to have one part number with 10 different lengths. OK, don't do that. That is bad. That violates the rule of form, fit, and function, where we should change the part number. If you have a piece of structural steel that's you know, the same cross section but 10 inches long in one place and 14 inches long in another place, give them different part numbers. Now, that's not to say you can't do families of parts or part tables. A lot of times out in the world you'll see you know, a common device and maybe it varies by one parameter, say the length which is common in air cylinders. So you'll see part number 123-12, and 12 represents the length of the body. That's OK, because it still has a unique designator. Maybe there's a part 123-6 with a 6-inch body. Again, it has a unique designator, so that's OK. What you don't want to do is have the same part, part number, with different shapes. That is bad. That will cause huge confusion on an assembly floor. So with that caveat in mind, uh, thank you for watching and see you soon.